Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to give a little introduction into what I'll be talking about later on in, uh, in a couple of the other chapters, mainly on POV, to see how you apply the characteristic curve to uh, starting to develop a visual style. Um, so without rambling on too long, let's get to it. So just quickly, let's have a look at a Rembrandt painting and I'll just talk through roughly how we apply this characteristic curve stuff to it. And then in the next chapter, we'll get into it in a lot more detail. Uh, Rembrandt had some funny names for, uh, for his paintings. Uh, things like uh, family in a room with a candle, uh, scholar with a candle, scholar in a room with a spiral stair. And this one that we're, we're going to look at here is philosopher with an open book, which makes sense. There is the philosopher and he's sitting right in front of a window with his open book. What I want to do is I want you to start thinking in terms of normal over and under exposure. So instead of uh, worrying exactly about where it is on the curve right now, let's just go through this, this painting and we'll plug in values. So uh, normal exposure will give as an N, uh, overexposure will give us a plus and underexposure will give us a minus. So to start off, we've got uh, this, yeah, let's go for normal and we'll, we'll look at the scholar's face and we'll give him a normal value on his face. Then uh, the book, uh, obviously just sitting in front of the window, we'll give that a normal value as well. And there's one other normal value which is the back wall. So we've got the back wall, the book and the scholar's face as our normal values. Now let's move up to the window. The window's overexposed but holding detail so we'll give that a plus. Then the, bl the blacks on the back wall, uh, there's detail in that back wall uh, behind the philosopher. So we'll call that underexposed, give that a minus. Then up the top of the painting, the blacks have pretty much lost detail. There's a minimal amount of detail in there. Um, so we'll give that an under uh, as a minus and it's somewhere near the toe of the curve, that part of the, the scene up there as is the left-hand side of the painting on the left-hand side of the staircase. Now let's go down to the floor and we've got a bit of a window pattern casting on the floor and that's sort of overexposed to into and falls off into normal and then into underexposure but we'll give that slightly over and we'll give that a plus. Uh, then the stairs uh, obviously both the bottom part of the stairs and the top part of the stairs are underexposed, so we'll give that a minus. We've also got the hallway in the background. Uh, so way down that hallway, uh, there's a little splash of light coming in and there's some light on the back wall to give it depth. But that's, that's well under normal, so we'll give that underexposed, we'll give that a minus as well. And so now we've been able to, to plug in all these values. So we've got a rough idea of what the, where the values fall. We've got normal over and under exposure. So the next thing to do is to draw a curve and work out roughly where they fall on the curve. And all we're doing again is normal over and under exposure. We don't care about values at this point. So here's our curve and we've got the blacks down the bottom. Then the next, next up we come to the hallway and then the next spot would be under the stairs. Our normal is somewhere up there in the middle. We'll, we'll call that normal. Everything over is, uh, at the top is over and everything underneath is under. And then uh, the window pattern on the floor and the window is way up the top near the, uh, near the shoulder or the knee of the curve. And then uh, our normal exposure is the face, the book and the wall behind the, uh, or to the left of the philosopher. So now we've got all our values plugged in to a characteristic curve. Now it comes time to work out how we're going to actually light the scene. So the next step is to actually give all those positions on the characteristic curve numbers. So let's say we're going to shoot at 2.8 and we might shoot at 2.8 because we want shallow depth of field. Uh, we want a nice soft image, which this is, and, uh, and, and focus falling off quick into the background. Uh, the, the other alternative is you, you might want to shoot with really broad depth of field and if you wanted to do that then we'd, we'd make our normal exposure maybe an 8, uh, 5.6 or an 8 or something like that. But let's say we're here we're going to say our normal exposure is 
Now, to a certain extent, that doesn't matter because all we're talking about here is relative values. So you can put your exposure wherever you want, but let's just say 2.8. So now we'll work up the curve again, and let's say the blacks, because there's almost no detail where, where we've looked at the blacks at the top and the left-hand side of the curve as minus eight. Now, what we could do is we could say, well, let's make the blacks minus seven uh, or seven and a half or, or you know, a, little bit, a little bit less than minus eight. And that gives us a little bit more detail in the blacks. And if we want to take it down further, we can do that in post. So we're going to slightly raise the blacks a little bit in original photography to maybe a seven or a seven and a half. And then we'll take it down that other half a stop in uh, post to get the blacks as tight as we want. And if we decide we want to hold more detail, we can. The hallway way down the back there, we're going to call minus four. Under the stairs, we're going to call minus three. And remembering that we've got minus eight uh, or eight stops under exposure latitude. But then we come back to normal, the window pattern on the floor uh, that's slightly overexposed, let's give that a two. And the window will give a four, but a four would put it right on the edge of losing detail. So let's pull the window back a bit and call the window minus three. And that way, if we want to take the window higher, we can but we know that we're going to hold detail there. So now our, our range of exposures is between seven and a half and, and uh, minus seven and a half and plus three. But when you look at the, the uh, painting, the painting doesn't really use the full expanded range. The, even though the windows are bright, they're bright compared to normal on the philosopher's face. So in actual fact, the whole range has been compressed and the, the highlights and our normal exposure have been pulled further down the curve. So the black areas are still where they are, way down the bottom near the uh, toe, but uh, all the other exposures, the, the brighter exposures, have all been pulled further down. So even though there is over and under exposure in the scene, it's in a compressed range. And that's what gives you gives you this sort of subtle moody look would be to hold all those exposures down into a compressed range, but still maintaining the look of normal over and under exposure. So that's just a quick look at, at uh, this one painting. And like I said, we'll go into it in a lot more detail when I get into talking about uh, the examples that I'm gonna show you in the next chapter. Okay, I hope that worked for you in giving you a little bit of an idea of the application of all this stuff. Uh, of course, we'll get into it in a lot more detail in, uh, in the coming videos. Uh, but again, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, click on that subscribe button. Comments, uh, any comments you've got, put them in the comments section down below. I'm always happy to, uh, to read your thoughts and, uh, and answer questions. And once again, thanks for watching. See you soon.